let's just sew whatever. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are making the apothecary tote, but this is the handbag. So it's a tote and handbag pattern from Sincerely Jen Pattern Co. I love this bag. This is the third time I've made this one. Um, I added this free motion quilting to this metallic vinyl um, and it's, I don't wanna sell it, but I know I have to. Um, I did not use any interfacing on this bag except for Decaville Heavy, and then I did add foam to these pieces to create that 3D look. Um, other than that, I used waterproof canvas for the lining and then just a one millimeter, th one millimeter thick vinyl. Um, this vinyl is coming to my website on August 15th at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. Um, it is the microfiber backed vinyl. It's so soft. This literally feels like leather to me. Um, so I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it and let me know what you think about it. But anyway, uh, I am obsessed with this pattern. This is the third time I've made it. It's so versatile. It's just so pretty. Um, it's got a zipper panel on the top and then we added one zipper pocket to the inside. This would be a really pretty bag to add a zipper overlay pocket like um, Lynn's Handmade does hers. Um, and then we've got our Heartwood and Hyde cork label on the inside. It's just so pretty. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I can't wait to see one if you make one. Okay, so let's quickly go over all of the pattern pieces. It is a little bit tricky to cut uh, when you first look at it, but I promise you, it's pretty easy. So you should have two of these really tall lining pieces, two of these slightly shorter lining pieces because you fold the pattern piece down, and then two of these even shorter still lining pieces, okay? So the shorter two are for later, they're not for now, so we're just gonna set them aside. These are the longer pieces, and we should have an exterior piece that meets it. This becomes your back slip pocket, so what we're gonna do is just quickly fold those together. Hmm. I, I have this idea of doing like some quilting and I'm not sure if I want to do it on the back slip pocket or if I want to do it on the front zipper pocket. I wonder if I should do both. But either way, we'll see what I decide. You want to clip these pieces together. And then you should have two of these really small top pieces and this gets clipped face down to the other tall lining piece. So this is just going to help us figure everything out later. Okay, so then we're going to have a one exterior piece that's shorter. This is the front exterior lower zipper panel and then we should have a trapezoidal shape that is the middle of our zippered pocket on the front so what i've done is just kind of do a, doing a color block situation where um the top one i believe this is piece c this is this color this is a this is b that kind of a thing and We'll set that aside for now. We should have two handles. So these are just kind of like grab handles. You can cut them longer as instructed in the pattern if you'd like, um, but I've just done the standard size. My vinyl has a little flaw here. I always use the flawed vinyls that I sell, but it's within what's gonna get folded over, so I'm not worried about it. So that's handles. I have a crossbody strap. This is one inch by the length of the vinyl. So I always like to keep my straps together. We'll start with those. These are the side panels. You wanna make sure that you have two of each piece that's mirrored. 
So you can see these line up, these line up, and this is actually the top. So you should have four of these total, but two each. So you cut one with your pattern piece face up, you flip it over, cut two, I should say you cut two with your pattern piece face up, cut two with your pattern piece face down. And I just like to keep those together. And then I've got two of my main lining pieces. I've got, oh, I only cut one zippered pocket, okay. One zippered pocket. Last time I made this, I cut two, so that's why I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> and then we have our zipper panel. Two, two lining, two exterior. And then this is my top panel. So once you've put your zipper panel and slip pockets together, add the side accent pieces, this goes across the top and then it goes and attaches to the lining above the zipper panel as well. And then we have two bottom pieces. And then we have two pieces that are two inches by three inches. These are the D-ring connectors. And then we have four pieces that are two by two. And these are the simple square ring connectors. I would not use any handle hardware thicker than the simple square rings, uh, only because this doesn't give you a lot of seam allowance with that piece. So if you're gonna use anything longer, I would say maybe cut these to two by three and see how far you can get it in there. That's what she said. Um, but yeah, that is all of the pattern pieces. I know it's kind of a lot, um, but I really love the way Jenny designs the patterns to be minimal pattern pieces. However, that does take some uh, mental toll trying to keep everything straight. So, like I said, I want to do some faux quilting. Not It's not faux quilting. It, it would literally be quilting on these solid pink pieces. Because my exterior is all solid, I really just I wanted to have some fun with this bag and make it really unique. So I'm going to use this foam and this vinyl, you know, and I'm going to kind of trace out a flower design. I'm going to quilt it on my machine. Going over hardware, I have a total of four zippers, so I need four zipper pulls. Uh, I went ahead and cut all of my zippers to about 10 inches, and then this one is about 15. Wow, I just eyeballed those. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Um, and then I'll add my zipper pulls. I always like to make sure that I iron my zipper tape. You can see they look nice and straight. So if you have an issue with wonky zippers, anything but plastic can be ironed. Uh, and these are all nylon. So the other hardware I have are purse feet. That's totally optional. I have simple square rings, square, simple rectangle rings, whatever. I have a one inch wide mouth slide adjuster. I have two one inch snap hooks, two one inch D-rings, and then I have a zipper end instead of the fabric zipper tab that Jenny has in the pattern. So that is all of my hardware. I'm gonna really quick attach these zipper pulls. Um, I'm so excited. Finally, after months and months, I have pictures of the zipper jig that I have designed. Um, it's very similar to this one, of course, but it's a little bit taller so that it fits on a table easier. And then it's heart shaped at the top so that it's not pointy or stabby so that if you wanted to leave it out, you could potentially. Um, and then of course it's rainbow. So there's that. Uh, all of the hardware and zipper tape and fabric I'm using are from mormino.com, which is my website where I sell stuff, as well as the bags I make. Okay. And then for this main zipper here, what I'm going to do is fold the sides over. So I'm kind of, 
it's like a 45 degree angle slash 90 degree angle so I'm folding it so that it's a 90 degree but it creates like a 45 degree angle inside I don't know but you want to trim them so they line up and then I'm taking my zipper and my lighter and I'm melting the ends so that they stick together so this is just going to prevent us from needing to sew it down so hopefully you can see that so just be careful leave your fingers out of the way and you want to make sure that they line up evenly i like to light it a little bit you can use your fingers to hold it together but i'm a wuss i just use the side of the zipper or side of the lighter like so and then in the meantime we can hold it down with some clips until we're ready for it and then really quick I'm just going to baste the end of the zipper because I do not want that coming off while we're putting everything together so that is it for hardware and that is my zippers so I'm using a silver marking pen to just kind of trace out my design, keeping in mind that it might kind of disappear as I'm going. I'm using a stitch length of about 3.5 and I'm just holding everything together as I go and just moving it around in circles. Um, I did base the edges kind of as I went and anytime I stopped and had to like go back in I made sure to um, trail off so that you didn't see any of those stitches on the front of the bag um, and then I did end up doing the back panel as well and I'm glad I did or the front panel I should say because it looked it, it turned out really good so if you try this I would love to see you could also do regular old quilting with just lines um, but this was a lot of fun and it doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody knows what it was supposed to look like if you mess up. So, Okay, so now that that is done, I'm just going to trim off the extra foam. Uh, keep in mind, if you are going to do this and you know ahead of time you're going to do this, you should probably... Uh, Cut it bigger than needed. Uh, and then to remove the silver ink, I mean, you could probably see that it was disappearing as I was doing the quilting. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of machine oil. Then I'll just use the soft side of the foam. And the machine oil actually does a really good job at removing those lines. Um, keep in mind that... I only had the pen sitting on there for a few minutes at most, so do not trace it and then leave it for a day or a couple hours because it will stay there. So I'm just doing a really quick basting all the way around the edges. Um, so that that foam isn't within those seam allowances as puffy anyway but yeah so there's there's the piece you see how fun that is Ugh. so this is a metallic vinyl that I have releasing on my website on August 15th uh, it has that same microfiber backing that I've been totally obsessed with lately um, so yeah keep an eye out for that so I'm just, I'm going to do it again. I think it would look really weird to have it on one pink piece, but not the others. Um, and it's just really therapeutic, honestly. So um, I will do that again. <laughs> okay, so we're going to grab those pieces I mentioned earlier. The tall, tallest of our lining pieces. And I'm going to clip these right sides together, making sure the sides line up. So because I added the quilting, my piece is just a teeny tiny bit smaller than it should be, but that is not an issue. It will be okay. 
I am using a stitch length of 4.5 and a 3 8 inch seam allowance as mentioned in the pattern. And I'm gonna sew across the top. And then a 3 8 inch seam allowance for this back piece as well. And you can absolutely mark that out with a ruler if you need to. No shame in that. This piece here, we're going to flip up and press down so that our the bulk of our seam is facing up towards that exterior piece. You wanna make sure it's a nice flat seam and top stitch. And then we're going to press these wrong sides together. Make sure everything sits nicely and top stitch. That is lovely. So excited. So I, I this becomes a slip pocket. So what I'm doing right now is ignoring how everything else is lining up and just making sure this seam here meets perfectly. Because all of this I can work into my seam allowance. So it looks like my main panel is like an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch smaller. Again, that's within the half inch seam allowance. So I am not worried about it at all. I'm going to stay stitch this into place. Whoops. We are going to sew the lining pieces together. Actually, I almost forgot about that because you don't want this in your seam allowance, especially if you have a domestic machine. It's kind of the genius of these pocket pieces. Is that she has you trim everything out of that seam allowance. Now I can go back to basting this together. And you really don't have to baste this together if you don't want to, because we're about to add the side panel anyway. But there's that. All right, here are the side panel pieces. We wanna grab one from each stack of mirrored pieces. And then this can get a little bit confusing. So what I would do if I were you, and I'm showing you how to do it, so you should probably listen to me, is set it up how it's supposed to look. So we want a nice long rectangle, so that's what that's gonna look like. So then you're gonna line up the edges. And she has these notches kind of built into the pattern piece to show you the half inch seam allowance that we wanna use. <clears throat> okay. And if there are any discrepancies in your pattern pieces, um, which I'll show you, my front panel usually ends up a little bit too long, and that's just because of the seam allowances that my machine is capable of having when attaching those zippers. So I always line it up to the top. Okay. So we see how that notch is right there. We're gonna start there, that's our half inch mark. And again, if you wanna use a ruler to mark it out so it's exactly perfect, you are absolutely welcome to do that. And then we're gonna stop where that other notch is. And that's our half an inch. So you can see here, you can see some of my lining. Again, that's okay, that's, that's within my half an inch, so not a big deal. I'm gonna trim all of my excess 
fabric there. I'm not trimming down that seam. I want that nice seam to top stitch through. But I do want to get rid of all my little extra threads. Okay, so now we're going to top stitch. We're just folding over the panel and top stitching through that seam. So if you want to add some kind of woven label into that seam, that would look really cute. I just want to pull that, fold it down. So that is the back panel completed. You can see we've got this great big slip pocket here. All right, so next we're gonna need the four other trapezoidal lining pieces. We're gonna start off with the shorter ones, and then we're gonna need the other two trapezoidal skinny pieces. I've added double-sided tape to the bottom of the top skinny one and then both sides of the middle longer one and then to the top of this piece here so i'm going to take one of my zippers again i just went ahead and cut these all to 10 inches i like my zipper pulls to be fully out of the way as i'm sewing And I want to make it so that I have plenty of zipper tape within the seam allowances so that it's caught within the seam and doesn't like slowly come out or anything like that. I'm going to use another piece of double-sided tape to hold my lining in place. This one doesn't have to be as long. We just want it to help us hold everything together. So Jen says to base this in place at a quarter inch seam allowance and then add the back at a three eighths inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start with that three eighths inch seam allowance. However, my machine can't really get that close to the zipper teeth. So like the best I can do is just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more than a quarter of an inch. So what that does is it creates an issue for me when I'm putting all of this together because I can't get that three eighths of an inch. So I'll actually end up cutting a little bit of the bottom panel off. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna press that down, wrong sides together. And then I'm going to top stitch through this piece. So you can see this is why I leave my zipper nice and long so I can just keep my zipper pull out of the way the entire time. Okay. And there is that piece. And now we're going to take the middle piece. And line that up. If you have your centers marked, that will definitely help keep everything lined up. And then nameplate. Make sure you know where you want your nameplate. Because once you baste your panels together, etc., you can't really get to the front panel. So keep that in mind. Okay, so then we're going to take our other short lining piece and line that up faced, facing each other. So right sides together for these lining pieces. You can see they don't line up. That's totally okay. We're going to top stitch and then trim off any excess. So then I'm going to get as close as I can to those zipper teeth as possible. And 
then for this one, we are just going to fold it up and top stitch. You don't want to open it because this piece gets laid down anyway to complete that zippered pocket. So then I'm going to fold this piece down and top stitch. And then we're going to grab our other zipper. Lay that face down. And then we'll grab our next set of lining pieces. So we've already used the tallest and the shortest. So now we're on to the middle size. You can use double-sided tape to hold that together if you need to. I'll just go ahead and clip it since the layers aren't as bulky as they were on the quilted piece. Make sure that your zippers are going in the same direction unless you don't want them to. And press all of that together. So that the wrong sides are facing each other. Okay, and then we're ready to add that last little piece to the top. And if you have your centers marked, that'll help. But if it gets confusing, what you can kind of do is lay those together, kind of flip it up like that. Flip it over, add that last lining panel facing each other. And then this one, we just push to the top and top stitch. Okay. So now I want to figure out where, where am I adding my nameplate and how off are my main panels going to be. So I'm just going to lay this down, lining it up with the top. Again, if you can follow that 3 eighths inch, you should not have this issue. And I know that it's not a pattern issue, it's a me issue. <laughs> Now I'm only clipping it on just to see how I need to trim up the piece. Otherwise you want to make sure you bring those zipper pulls in. Okay, so I'm not too far off. I got a little bit closer than previous. So I've just kind of marked that out. And then I will trace that along the entire bottom. Not too bad. Okay, I'm gonna find my center so I can attach my nameplate. I'm thinking kind of up here would look really good. Yeah, about four inches up. There's my center.
And I want to be careful not to cut through my quilting. Otherwise, it'll start to come undone. What was that about not cutting through your quilting? Yeesh. So base through this. All right. So now Keeping right sides together of those pockets. So I've moved the top three pieces out of the way and I'm gonna stitch through the bottom with a fairly big seam allowance. Probably don't need it to be quite that large of a seam allowance. And we're going to trim this excess. And then we can lay these pieces down. Make sure the panels are sitting flat before you lift up that top piece. Otherwise, if you like bring them together, you're going to create a weird bubble in your panel. So keep it nice and flat. Base through that. Okay, make sure you caught the back side and then trim off that excess. We're gonna bring in our zippers. And if you want to, you can baste around all of the layers before you add your side panels. I'm just gonna go ahead and add my side panels. Okay, so we want it to look like that when we're done. So we'll lay that down. Again, line up that top. And all of this extra, I'm just gonna cut out before we top stitch. Make sure your zipper pulls are pulled in Just trimming away that excess. I feel pretty good that we've caught the zipper well enough that I can trim that down. All of that extra can go by. Okay, and then we'll top stitch this panel here. So that is that panel mostly completed as well.
All right, next is going to be attaching our hardware pieces to that top panel. I'm just gonna take a piece of double-sided tape. Uh, the one downside to this vinyl is it doesn't hold tape super well. It's a pretty big bummer. Where'd my zipper? Where'd my tape go? We're gonna fold the edges into the middle. What's nice about these connectors being two by two is there's, you know, there's no certain way they're gonna need to go. It's kind of cool. And then we're gonna top stitch these. Okay, this one holds better than the glitter vinyls do, it seems like, so that's good. And then the way the pattern directions say to add these is on the main panel at the side, um, but the connectors are a little bit too short for my machine to be able to attach them nicely there. Um, and it gets a little bulky, so I'm going to just sew these into the top side seam. Um, it looked great last time, so I'm just going to do that again. So I'm going to flip these over so I can see that joined seam and I'm going to add more double sided tape, just a little bit. These are all going to get folded with raw edges together. And I don't want them to move around because it's such a small seam. Then I need my simple square rings and my D rings. And save your baggies. Feel free to send them back to us. We will reuse them. These pieces really aren't big enough to add a rivet through. Maybe this connector, but not, not really. And if you know the materials you're using are a little bit thicker, or you want to use bigger hardware, I think I mentioned this earlier, but you can cut these to like two inches wide by maybe two and a half inches tall, and that'll give you a little bit extra room. Okay, so the double-sided tape really, really helps, and I would recommend doing it. So now we're going to grab our exterior panels again, and I'm going to baste these in place right where the side panel ends, or it begins, depending on which way you're going. And you just want that to line right up with that edge. And they will be facing down. So right where it ends, right where it begins, whatever way you want to look at that.
And that's why I did that double-sided tape so that when I lay it down, I know they're going to stay together. And not shift away. Okay. So then we're going to grab our top exterior. If you have a domestic machine or you know the vinyl you're using is a little bit thick, you could use a lining piece for the other top panel. Um, I probably should have. It's going to get a little bit bulky, but it'll be fine. So I, it is a bit of a trapezoidal shape as well. So you just want to be mindful to mark the top and then make sure the top is pointing down when you clip right sides together. Line up your centers. And then you're going to use a half an inch seam allowance or as close to it as your machine can get. And then this piece is going to get flipped down and you're going to top stitch so that your strap connectors are pointing up. vinyl is so beautiful you just want to be careful if you're using this vinyl the microfiber backing has a little bit of friction that it adds so it could stretch as you're working with it not too badly but it's just so different to work with I love it it's like working with leather but it's definitely not leather So our exterior is nearly completed. We're just gonna put right sides together, lining up these seams here. You really wanna make sure that that piece is lined up. And then half an inch of seam allowance. And then this is where you would add, I'm gonna unclip this really quick so you can see. Uh, this is where you would add your strap connector, but it just feels really difficult to attach with that seam right there. So I'm just going to baste mine right here with like a quarter of an inch further in the seam allowance. So it's gonna add some bulk to that seam right there when I top stitch, I just have to be really, really careful. Oh, oh. 
as I was admiring, everything fell. It's fine, I'll pick it up. Luckily there's less pieces than there were. Okay. So freaking pretty. And like I said, this is my decision to add it to the side seam here. I was thinking too, you can even use the three quarter inch dual strap connectors I have on my website. So this bottom part would be a one inch connector and then you could make three quarter inch handles, but it has that D ring so you could attach your crossbody strap to opposite sides and that would omit the need for these. I thought about trying one like that. I might do another at another time, but this is actually the third one I've made. I just cut a whole bunch out one day. This one. I'm gonna really quickly work on my handles. I'm no. I'm gonna work on the zipper panel. Because I know I'm gonna run out of bobbin here soon. Um I'm gonna wait to attach the bottom panels until I have everything done. I want that to be the last thing, mostly so I don't have to move the camera around so much. Um, but we're going to mark one inch along the bottoms, along the short sides, I should say, of our zipper panel pieces. And the two versions of this bag I've made so far, I used um, the perky zipper panel method. Um, and I like it. I think the pattern kind of talks, or the pattern has you top stitch it so it's a depressed zipper panel. And if you're not sure what that means, I'll explain it as I'm attaching it. Um, but I really, I don't know, I don't know which one's better. I really don't. Grabbing my zipper tape, my double-sided tape. And I've cut my lining for the zipper panel to be a little bit wider, just because sometimes with waterproof canvas, it can shrink in the seams just because it can add bulk. Might not have that issue, but I figured it can't hurt. I'll always just be able to trim down that excess. So I marked one inch so that I can just fold the raw edge up to meet that one inch marking. Like the amount of pieces that I'm sewing I'm like as much as I'm sewing I'm also applying double-sided tape okay. so the raw edge meets that one inch line so that I know I folded it up half an inch now I'm gonna add eighth inch wide double-sided tape to one edge of all of these pieces. I like to use the eighth inch wide double sided tape because it holds your zipper in place so that there's no wobbliness. 
and there is no risk of you seeing it outside of your seam allowance. So you could use quarter inch or three eighth inch wide, but it's so close to what your seam allowance is that you hate for it to kind of poke out. So I really enjoy using the eighth inch wide double sided tape for that reason. Okay, so there is that. So now I can grab my zipper that I've squared off. If you don't square off, like, okay, I'm not saying you have an option here. I'm saying if you don't, you're not closing off your zipper. So you don't want the end of the zipper out and about because then your zipper pull can just fly right off. You need to create a stop for it essentially. So you can see my zipper can't go anywhere anymore because it's closed off. Unlike this side here, it's raw. You can't have raw zipper tape. Anyway, if you're not a beginner, you're like, yeah, I know, move on. But just in case you're a beginner, you gotta close that off. All right, so I'm lining this like a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge and lining it so it's face down. And then I'm gonna grab a lining piece and I'm gonna lay this right on top, lining up my folded edges. And if something is off, you can kind of refold it, but that is what it should be looking like. And I'm gonna sew about an eighth of an inch down from the top, back stitching all the way down, stopping about an eighth of an inch. You don't want to go from end to end where you risk seeing your stitches. And we're going to top stitch it anyway, so everything should hold secure. And I like to keep my zipper unzipped up until this point because then it's just totally out of the way. But then we're going to fold this down and top stitch. So again, I cut my lining wider than I needed it to be just in case. So if you're like, whoa, that's off. For me, it's okay. Yours should line up. So we'll just fold and top stitch. You want to keep everything out of the way. I'm pressing as I go. Keep your needle in and pivot. And then I'll baste, ah, I knew the bobbin was close to running out. Not the best place to run out, but not the worst. And then I like to baste or stay stitch, whatever you want to call it, all the way across the other side too, so that nothing shifts. And then we'll just trim off that excess if there is any. Oh, it's so cute. All right, so I keep it zipped to add the next part but then I unzip it before I sew. I like to line up. I like to make sure these edges line up nicely. And then unzip it. Make sure it's nice and straight. And then we'll 
bottles. So those together. so excited to get this done. I should have started with my straps, but I was doing the quilting. Now that I have a fresh bobbin, I am going to move on to my straps, so I'll probably um, speed through those because you've seen, you've seen me do straps. And this is why I basted that together. You can add a clip too, but it just... Sometimes it doesn't hold. You do not want your zipper to come off. There is nothing worse. I'm trying to line that up again. I mean, you can do it. I've done it. But if I don't have to, why would I? So I'm pulling my zipper out of that seam. trimming off the excess and then we're going to snip the center of the panel. So we'll zip that back up, fold it in half. Snip the center. Okay, set that aside. Grab our handles. I'm just gonna do one on camera and then I'll time lapse through the other three technically. But I've marked out my center. I'm gonna add the double sided tape. Some people like to use a thinner double sided tape along the outer edges to then fold in. So whatever method you prefer, there is no right or wrong way. But I do like to leave a little bit of a gap in between here. And that just gives some room for the strap to be folded on itself. So we wanna top stitch all four sides. So I'm at an eighth of an inch from the outer edge. I always like to start on the edge that needs to be closed so that none of the layers shift. I'm gonna come around the other side. And then I'll pull my threads through to one side and trim it off. And then I'm going to trim down my extra vinyl, anything that's uneven. Just make sure your scissors are nice and sharp. And trim it down. You could then add strap ends if you wanted to. I used to use strap ends, but I haven't in a very long time. I think they're time consuming and like they're just not needed for me, I guess. But then I am using this little rivet template guide. This has been awesome. You just line it up. So A, B, and C are the markings um, and I'll link this it's from Leslie Anthony, I know that, but I have to get the shop information. So you can use C and B if your hardware is thin or your vinyl is thin. Otherwise, you'll want to use A and C for thicker straps and thicker hardware. And this is so that you have the perfect alignment every time. So I'll just go ahead and really quickly punch those holes. I'm 
and I've really been enjoying having a hand punch. I didn't think I would use it as much as I do, but I really do use it a lot. <laughs> so there is our grab handle ready to go. Okay, sorry for punching you in the face. <laughs> so now that my strap is finished on one side, I've used holes A and B, and this is the side I'm gonna be adding my, my slide adjuster to, and then on the other side I used, um, oh, I'm sorry, B and C. The other side I used A and C. Uh, and this is from Jolie's Creations. I remembered as I was filming. I was like, oh yeah, Jolie's Creations. Okay. So I need two rivets. Okay. And then I need my hardware. So I've got my one inch wide mouth slide adjuster and two one inch snap hooks. So this is the shorter end. There's a little flaw here, but you're never gonna see it. I mean, you and I know it exists, but the chances that somebody else is gonna see it are slim to none. But I just hate to waste the vinyl when it's still usable, you know? It's just got a finish flaw. And I like to use a small hole punch. So I've used probably a two millimeter. Um, and I, I wanna make sure like I have to really pinch the rivet through it so that it doesn't pull and come undone. All right, so there's that attached. So I'm just gonna set this rivet really quick. All right, so now that that is attached, I'm going to pull my strap flat. Take off the paste film, which you could use to reapply to your hardware um, so that it doesn't get damaged in shipping, etc. Just a thought. So one of these is just going to go onto the free end. We're going to then loop this through the top, down through the bottom. So you can see this wide mouth slider gives plenty of room for the vinyl to sit. Hello, Benjamin, can I help you? You are covered in, well, covered in cat hair, but old cat hair. All right, and then we'll slide this through the other end, pushing the rivet through one side and then back through the other. And I like to be conscious, conscious, oh, I need to stop hitting that, I'm so sorry, of the back side. So this is the back, so that's where I folded this other side of my strap to. And then I'll attach the cap and set this. And then our strap is done. Excuse me, sir. Could you, um, could you go away? Where's that? Okay. Literally just covered in dust. What are you doing? Get. Go. There you go. All right. So the pattern calls for just one zippered pocket. Um, you can add two if you want. You could also add 
um, slip pockets. So do whatever you want. We're gonna do one zippered pocket because that's all that I have cut out. So I'm gonna take one of my lining panels. I'm gonna fold it in half. Keep in mind this piece is also trapezoidal. So make note of this, the smaller side is the top. I'm gonna take one of my zipper pocket pieces. I'm gonna fold it in half. And then I'm going to use my zipper pocket ruler to find the center and trace out my 7 inch zipper pocket box. And then lining up my center folds, which this print is so busy I can't see it. <laughs> but you can also just center it out, you know. see hold please I'm so used to using solid pieces for the lining there we go So it's about an inch from the bottom edge that I've got it set. I like to clip it into place. Clip it. Open it. Okay. And then I am just going to sew along the two parallel lines. If you want to sew the complete box, you absolutely can. Just make sure that you're snipping into those corners very well so that there is no puckering. And with the waterproof canvas that I sell, you have to be careful not to iron the backside. Um, it is a PVC coating and it can melt. So always make sure you're ironing the front of the fabric. Use a lot of steam and go quick. But the other day, when I made a zipper pocket with this, I was able to press it mostly by hand, which was awesome. So we'll turn this through. So that wrong sides are together again you just want to press it and it really did finger press pretty nicely I was very impressed I still want to use a little bit of steam to really just set it into place and you can see because I didn't do the box these little triangles want to come out you can just fold them back in if you cut them too short, you can use a piece of double-sided tape to just help wrangle them into place. But yeah, I'm going to press this with my iron really quick. Uh, that's much nicer. Got my zipper here. I like to make sure that my zipper pull is hanging off the edge here and that the edge of my zipper tape is within the seam allowance you don't want it to be like this because this could start to fray over time and pull and come undone and then your zipper is compromised. We don't want that. So I'm going to start on this side. My zipper pull is here. It's just totally out of the way. I'm going to start at the corner. And sew straight down. Go over the side. Pivot, come back down, and keep in mind the size of your zipper pull. If you've got a really big zipper pull, you may want to stop here to push your zipper pull in 
with the pop tabs, I know that I can go from end to end. And the reason I do this is so that the zipper teeth are aligned the entire time we're sewing that together. And then we can pull our zipper in, make sure it's realigned, unzip again, and just close it off. And then you can pull your zipper, no, pull your threads to the back. Everything is a zipper tape today. <laughs> okay. And then we do turn the bag through an opening within the lining. So I'm going to leave two openings for myself. So I'm folding the bottom edge under. This creates a nice seam. So we're leaving the zipper pocket open, but I'm also going to leave an area within the bottom unsewn so that I don't risk ripping, like I don't risk causing any harm to my zipper teeth or the lining fabric, etc. We don't want to stress it because we can't fix it if something happens to it. So I'm gonna trim right there. And then pull this open. Press that flat. So this creates a nice, easy thing to top stitch closed. All right, there's one side done. And then this side, keep in mind again, the narrow part is at the top. I've already snipped my centers along the top and the bottom, go me. Um, but I do wanna add a little label situation here really quick. I have one more of these printed rainbow gradient labels from the Heartwood and Hide, and they just look so fun. Like it kind of blends in, so that's besides the point, but it matches so perfectly. You just want to be careful not to fold this label or you might crack the ink. Say crack again, crack. So what I'm going to do is line up my center. And then just top stitch that into place. The thread that I'm using is from Saya Swag, and I wasn't sure how I'd like it just based on the way it looks. Like, it looks really pretty. It looks really silky and shiny, um, and I was worried my machine wouldn't like it, but I have had zero issues. I'm going to have to get some more. All right, we are ready to add our zipper panel. So I like to make sure that my zippers are all going in the same direction. So if this were shut, my zipper would be over here. So I'm gonna start with my zipper panel on this side. I literally just threw those in there. Lining up my center snips. There we go. You can base that down if you want. I'm just gonna grab my top lining panel. Again, I've marked which way is the top. You can see my arrow here is pointing that way. And then a half inch seam allowance. If you couldn't use a half inch seam allowance on the exterior top, use the same seam allowance. <clears throat> and 
And then I'm going to talk to you about, so if I were to top stitch along the top of this panel here, that would be a depressed zipper panel. It's facing down. But if you flip it up like this, this is a perky zipper panel. So I'm top stitching here. And that makes it so that the zipper panel wants to point up. So I really don't know which way is better for this bag, but the instructions say to top stitch along this panel, which would make it a depressed zipper panel. So we're going to try that. A perky zipper panel does kind of complicate top stitching it, etc., because it wants to kind of fold up and into the way. So there's pros and cons. Do whatever you want. Okay, there's my top pointing down. say top stitching this is so much easier with it being a depressed zipper panel. Because when it's the other way, you gotta make sure this is out of the way, this is out of the way. It's just more complicated. Alright, so we're gonna line up those panels. Half inch seam allowance. If you're worried about your lining being too big, you can increase your seam allowance as you get to the bottom. You just really have to be mindful of that so that your bottom zipper panel fits still. All right, so we're gonna tuck the tail in. And again, line up those pieces there. So centers are marked there, and this is the center there. So we're going to grab our bottom panel. I'm going to line up the centers on the side here that does not have the zipper pocket open. And I'm just going to baste this on, and we're going to leave the rest of it open. So start where it's not rounded. and baste that into place. This is not part of the pattern, but this is going to make it so that I can turn the bag through this opening and then finish sewing the bottom of the bag through the zipper pocket. Make sure your zipper pocket's open. Okay? So now we can change up the camera angle and I will attach the bottom of the exterior. I'm gonna really quick add some double-sided tape. Oh, purse feet, that's right. I'm gonna add purse feet. So I will show you how I like to do that. So I sell purse feet in packs of five. So if I can, I will use all five. And we can. So I'm gonna find my center here and mark that out. And then I'm going to measure four inches out and one inch up. Oh, you couldn't see that. So I'm just laying my ruler in the center at the edge of the Decaville Heavy and marking that corner. And then make sure your slits are all going in the same direction. That'll make it easier to install. You can, of course, use the bucket purse feet or the screw-in purse feet, whatever you'd like. 
I'm still old school and I like these purse feet. I just think they're quicker. But it's because it's what I know. Give them a little purple nurple so they're nice and tight. Blech. I didn't like that sentence. Okay, press the purse feet open using the washers. And then I'm going to add double-sided tape over these to protect my hands from when we're turning the bag, but it also um, just keeps those purse feet in place. I like to make sure that my duct tape extends into the seam allowance in at least one place so that it stays secure. And there are the purse feet attached. And then I'm going to use quarter inch wide or three eighths inch wide, whatever you got, double sided tape. You can use eighth inch wide, but I really like using the quarter inch wide for this. Um, so basically, you just, you can never have enough double sided tape. Oh, crap. Uh, make sure you mark your centers first. You can do it after you add the tape, but it's not as easy. Centers that way and centers the other way. And then I just tape around the bottom. Um, you can use staples to do this, um, but I've really been enjoying the double-sided tape because there's no staples. And another reason I use the quarter inch wide over the eighth inch wide is the quarter inch wide, for some reason, doesn't stick to me like the eighth inch wide does. I don't know what that's about, but eighth inch wide will sometimes like come off on my fingers so okay so now we can attach the bottom panel so we'll start by lining up Ugh, I didn't mark out the centers lining up our centers So I start with lining up the center snips. And then working out the curves. Pinching all of that together, making sure they fit nicely. And the staples don't risk um, scratching up your machine. You can see here, all of that is from staples. Not the company, but the item. <laughs> Although I do think I ordered staples from staples. How meta. 
Hi, Connor. Yeah, hi, kitty baby. How are you? Yeah. All right, now we can attach the bottom panel. Okay. We'll just follow the bottom panel. Nice and slow. I'm turning the bag as I start to get to those curves. Leave your needle in as you go. And just, it's a little tricky. But keeping your bag in the shape as you're going can help. Okay, we're getting to a flat point so I can lay this down. And then we're getting towards a curve. So leave your needle in and create that round bottom for your bag and continue on. I will trim off the excess. And then we're ready to put the exterior and the lining together. Okay. So we'll flip our lining right side out to put into our exterior, which is wrong side out. And then again, I just like my zippers to zip in the same direction. So that's how I'm going to lay it into this bag. This bag is so pretty so far. Oh my gosh. So if you had top stitch your zipper this way, it's going to stick up. So you want to make sure you're folding it down. But if you top stitched it so it's depressed like this one, it will sit where you need it to. So folding open our side seams. I'm going to line those up. And then you can line up your center markings on your top panels. I don't think this vinyl is going to be too thick. It's just so beautiful. I have not made the tote bag size. This is the smaller handbag size. Um, but I think my mom would really like the tote size, depending on how big it is. Might even need to enlarge it for her. She loves big bags. Okay. 
This could even be a drop-in lining if you really wanted to. You could follow the instructions for the Felicity tote and do a similar situation to that. Um, but then we're just going to sew around the top. Half inch seam allowance around the top. I really like the size of this bag. Like it's just small enough, but it's not too small that it's tricky on your sewing machine either. And then this is where it's going to get bulky with the connector in that side seam, which is why um, Jen has you attach them to the body of the bag. And then I am not going to trim down that seam allowance. I want it to be thicker to help keep the bag structure. So we have this really nice big opening at the bottom. But turning it through is going to be super quick. push along the bottom. Okay. And then before you close it, just check your seams, make sure everything looks good. You're gonna take your zipper pocket lining and then grab the bottom of the bag. Now, you don't have to baste your lining bottom in place, but I think it's kind of nice to just have that one little section done. And then line up your center snips. <laughs> My chair is so squeaky. And then ease in, clipping the curves of the bag together. And you could absolutely use double-sided tape for this piece as well but I don't find that the lining shifts as much as the exterior can. Okay, let's sew it. I'm gonna start where I've left off.
I'll trim that down. Okay. So now we push all of that back into the bag and we close up the birthing hole. This is where I like to add woven labels. Yes, sometimes more than one. <laughs> so I'm gonna add one of my more me know labels and a you look really pretty today. And then it sounds like it's time to change the bobbin before we top stitch this bag. I initially had planned to do nickel with this fabric, um, but I got my hardware bins mixed up and just didn't even think about it when I was sewing another bag together. Um, but I'm actually really liking the light gold with it. All right, so now we are going to roll this seam down. So your lining top panel needs to go inside the bag. So I'm rolling this seam back and forth. You want to be able to kind of see that stitch line. This part can be a little bit tricky, but it's really necessary if you want the top of your bag to look good. To really roll that seam up as much as possible. See like right in here, it's not up as far as it should be. Beautiful. So I'm gonna push the lining down inside because if anything is not right with this bag, now is the time to fix it. Zip it up, see what it looks like. Oh, I really like the depressed zipper panel better than the perky. I don't know, it really just depends on what you're going for. So what a perky zipper panel would look like, I don't have any of my finished ones with me, is this would just kind of stick up like that. So it's easier to see and access, which is just personal preference. I There really is no reason for this bag that you can't do either one. So it's just gonna be totally up to you. There are some bags where it just really doesn't work. So that's why I wanted to mention it, but. Oh my goodness, I love it. This, it just feels so cool. Nice big pocket there. There's zipper pockets here. I have a little pucker, but it's fine. Handmade. All right, now we got a top stitch. I don't want to, but we got it. I have found it easier, maybe, to top stitch it this way. You just want to make sure you're starting with your threads behind a strap connector, just in case. And then if you have an industrial walking foot machine, make sure you've got a little scrap of leather nearby so that we can get over that hump without scratching up the vinyl. 
I have been using a stitch length of 4.5 pretty consistently for this bag. Um, other than my quilting, I used a 3.5. Right, here we go. Up the connector. And then on the way down, I'm going to put that there so that I don't scratch the vinyl so that I hopefully don't. <laughs> of course, make sure your square rings are facing down. This vinyl just feels like leather. I love it. Okay, we're going up. We're not going fast, we're going nice and slow. It's easier to walk up the hill than run up the hill. Whether you're fetching a pail of water or not. Okay, on the way down, I'm going slow and I'm using this scrap here to protect that seam. Oh, I didn't change my bobbin. Oh, dear bobbin gods, please be with me. Oh, thank goodness. So now all we need to do is add our zipper end hardware and rivet on our straps and this bag is done. Okay, so I'm gonna trim down, trim down my zipper just a little bit. Like to use a lighter just along the end so it doesn't fray. I've got my screw for my zipper end and then the paste film of course you can leave that on so when it gets to your customer it's shiny and new or whatever you'd like. Add that zipper end my screwdriver. I should look into getting some fun colored screwdrivers. Okay, give your zipper end a nice tug. Make sure it stays in place. Mm. Okay. So then super easy. We already riveted our handles. Or we hole punched, I should say. Still have to rivet them. Oh. Which one is caps? Which one is posts? I don't know. I think I've gotten them mixed up. Okay. So the post through the back, back out to the front. 
and then add the cap. And I have been using the Cam Snap Press with the Snaps Tools dies. Um, but after last weekend at the Dallas Expo, or the Dallas Workshop, I'm sorry, um, my friend Anne was showing me her buckle guy dies, etc. So I ordered a buckle guy die to set my 9mm rivets, and I think it's going to be really, really nice. I hate that you have to order from like 90 million different places, but I just don't think the cam snap die was my favorite especially since they don't have an actual nine millimeter and it works for some people but it did not work for me but what's awesome is the press is really heavy duty and nice um, quality I thought Okay. Oh, goodbye. All right, so then I will go ahead and set these. And that is our tutorial for the apothecary tote slash handbag, because this is the handbag from Sincerely Jen Pattern Company. Um, stunning. I love this pattern. It's so versatile. Um, seeing all of the tester bags was really inspiring to have some fun. Uh, the only interfacing I used is the Decaville Heavy on the exterior panel and technically the foam, but I wouldn't have. So it's just vinyl, waterproof canvas, and it's stunning. So you got a zipper pocket there, a zipper pocket there, slip pocket there, and then one zipper pocket inside. We added these purse feet to the bottom, and then I changed up the connectors you could possibly add a rivet there, but I just don't think there's enough room, so I'm not gonna risk it. But I love these cute little grab handles. I love a grab handle situation, so I love this bag. It's amazing. Thank you so much for watching. If you aren't already subscribed, I would love it if you would do so. And be sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about the camera angle and the bag itself and you know how your pets are doing just just say hi all right bye